In this video, we are going to discuss two important properties about angle modulated signals, which are uh, uh, namely the power of the angle modulated signals and the bandwidth. The, well, let's start with the power, which is very easy. In any angle modulated signal, angle modulated signal it can be written as A cosine theta of t, right? And always when always said it many times that if you have a cosine wave, its power is the amplitude squared over 2. Regardless, regardless of what is inside this cosine, the power of it is a squared over 2. So always for any angle modulated signal, whether it's Fm or Pm or a general angle modulated signal, the power will be always the amplitude squared over 2, regardless of what is inside the cosine. Let's now talk about the bandwidth. And when we talk about the bandwidth, finding the bandwidth of angle modulated signals, it's not direct. We need to play some mathematical tricks in order to find the bandwidth. That's why we are going to do some math here. And let's focus on Fm. We'll focus on the Fm. Okay? And later we'll see how to change from the Fm to Pm. How to calculate using the same equations, how to calculate the bandwidth of the Pm. But let's focus on calculating the bandwidth of Fm for now. Fm signal can be written as A cosine omega ct plus Kf integration from minus infinity to t m of tau d tau just for simplicity and to avoid writing this integration in all the steps we are going to call this part we are going to call this integration we are going to call it a of t so a of t a of t let's write it here we are going to do some Side work here, A of T is the integration from minus infinity to T, M of tau, T tau. And you can say that M, you can say also that M is the derivative of A. Right? So we are going to replace this integration with just uh, another name. We are going to call it A of T. Before we continue with the analysis of the bandwidth, let's do or ask some questions about the relation between m of t and a of t. a of t is the integration of m, and m is the differentiation of a. What's the relation between their bandwidth? So, assuming that the bandwidth of a, assume that the bandwidth of a, it has a bandwidth of b hertz. What, what is the bandwidth of m? Think about it. If A is the integration of M, or in other words, M is the differentiation of A, and A has a bandwidth of B hertz, what would be the bandwidth of M? Take a moment to think about it. You can pause the video here. But I'm claiming that they both will have exactly the same bandwidth. Why? Because if M of T equals the differentiation of A, this means that M of omega will be g omega multiplied by a of omega which means that if a has a band of b hertz which means that a of omega a of omega might look like this from minus b hertz to b hertz this is in the frequency domain let's say a of f okay or with omega it will be 2 pi b and minus 2 pi b what you are doing here is you are multiplying each value to avoid confusion, let's make it in omega. So, in omega, it will be two pi b and negative two pi b. Okay. In order to get the spectrum of m, you are going to multiply each value of a omega by its omega, right? So, if the omega here is ten, you are going to multiply this point by ten. If uh, omega here is 20, you are going to multiply this point by 20. So m of omega, m of omega will be a different shape. But when a of omega reaches zero, for sure when a of omega reaches zero, m of omega also will reach zero, right? 
So whenever a of omega is zero, here and here, m of omega also will be zero here and here. Of course, the shape will be different. The shape might be different, but it will go from minus two pi b to two pi b, and it will have exactly the same bandwidth of the pairs. So again, if you have a segment that is a differentiation of another segment, or a segment that is an integration of another segment, both of them will have exactly the same bandwidth. This is the first question that we need to answer. Another question that we need to answer before we go back to our analysis. If A of T has a value of B hertz, if A of T has a value of B hertz, what about A squared of T? What is the value of A squared of T? A squared of T, we discussed this before, A squared of T is A of T times A of T. It's a multiplication in the time domain, which means it's in the frequency domain, it will be convolution. And convolution between a signal and itself doubles its bandwidth. So if this is the bandwidth of one signal, when you convolve it with itself, what happens is you are going to reflect uh, one of them and then keep shifting, multiplying, shifting. So up to here, the multiplication is zero. Starting from here, the multiplication will appear, 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 up until it reaches here, and then the convolution will be zero again. So there will be a shift, 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 shift up to this bandwidth, and then shift, 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 shift up to double the bandwidth. So the bandwidth of the convolution will be double the bandwidth of any one of them. So a squared of t will have a bandwidth of 2b hertz. What about a cube? It's another multiplication. The bandwidth will be 3b hertz. You can prove it from the convolution again. In general, a to the power n of t, its bandwidth will be n d hertz. So these are some basic information that we need in our analysis. Now, in order to analyze the bandwidth of uh, fm signal, this signal can be written as the real part of a exponential j t f a of t multiplied by exponential j omega c t. Why is that? Why can we write the cosine as the real part of complex exponential? Because we know that for any complex exponential, a to the power j x can be written as cosine x plus j sine x. So cosine x represents the real part of exponential j x. So here, this is what we did. Cosine x is the real part of a of e exponential j x. So cosine x is the real part of exponential j x. But we divide the exponential into two uh, exponentials multiplied by each other. So this is our FM say. Can be written like this. Real part of exponential j omega c t plus e f a of t. Now what we are going to do is we are going to expand this exponential using Taylor series. And we know that exponential x can be written as 1 plus x plus x squared over factorial 2 plus x cubed over factorial 3 and so on. So we are going to use this expansion to expand this exponential. So this exponential can be written as 1 plus x. x here is j kf a of t plus x squared plus x squared, this is our x, plus x squared over factorial 2. When you square this, it will give you negative kf squared a squared over factorial 2 plus x cubed when you cube this will be minus j kf cubed a cubed over factorial 3 and so on infinite number of curves this is this expression so this expression was expanded using Taylor's the other expression exponential j omega ct i'm going to write it as cosine omega ct plus j sine omega ct. So now, 
our reference signal is the real part of a constant A multiplied by this bracket multiplied by this bracket. The real part of this bracket times this bracket. Forget about A because A is constant. A is constant. The real part of this bracket times this bracket comes for, from either you multiply a real term times the real term here, which is the cosine, or an imaginary term times the imaginary term here, which is the sine. So let's do it. The real part of this multiplication will be 1 multiplied by cosine. So it's going to give you cosine. And then the next term is imaginary. So the real part will come from applying this imaginary term by this imaginary term. So it will be j times j it will be negative kf a of t sine omega ct. The next term is real. So if you multiply by real, it will give you real. So the next term will be negative kf squared a squared over factorial 2 multiplied by cosine cosine omega ct. The next term is imaginary. So if you multiply imaginary times imaginary, it will get you real. So it will be plus kf q a q over factorial 3 multiplied by sine. And so on. The next term will be power 4 multiplied by cosine. Power 4 multiplied by cosine. The next term will be power 5 multiplied by sine, and so on. Infinite number of terms. Now let's plot the spectrum of this. Now this is a new expression that represents our FM signal. So our FM signal can be written like this. Now let's plot the spectrum. Let's plot the spectrum. And we focus only on the positive part of the spectrum. Focus on the positive part of the spectrum. The first term is a cosine. So it appears in the spectrum and as a delta at omega c. The next term is the signal a of t multiplied by a carrier sine. So this is a of t shifted around omega c. And we agree that a of t has a bandwidth of b hertz or 2 pi b radian per second. So when you multiply a of t times sine, it will appear in the spectrum as a signal like this, where this is omega c plus 2 pi b, and this is omega c minus 2 pi b. And then the next term is a squared multiplied by cosine. The signal a squared, it has a bandwidth of 2 b hertz, double the bandwidth of a, 2 b hertz, 4 pi b from this side, 4 pi b from the other side. And then multiply by cosine, it will be shifted around omega c. So the next term will be, it will appear as a spectrum like this. Omega c plus 4 pi b and omega c minus 4 pi b. The next term is a q, which has a bandwidth of 3 b hertz. Multiply by sine. So it will be shifted around omega c and the bandwidth will be larger. The next term is a to the power 4. So it will give you something like this. The next term is power 5, power 6. So every term, every new term is going to expand the bandwidth. And we have here infinite number of terms. So the bandwidth is going to be infinity. So theoretically speaking, theoretically speaking, the bandwidth of angle modulated signals, and we have shown this on the FM as an example, the bandwidth of angle modulated signals will be, theoretically speaking, infinity. It goes to infinity. However, practically speaking, this is theoretically speaking. Theoretically speaking, the bandwidth goes to infinity. But practically speaking, the situation is different. Because if it was infinity, we wouldn't have been using FM and PM. We would have been transmitting only one channel, like news, and that's it. Right? Because the, the news channel is going to take the whole spectrum from minus infinity to infinity. But this is not the case. We are transmitting actually many channels together. So what is the secret about this? The secret is they found that although theoretically speaking the bandwidth is infinity, practically speaking most of the energy, most of the energy or the power of our signal is concentrated 
in a limited or a finite bandwidth. So, although it is theoretically speaking infinity, they found that practically speaking, most of the power or the energy is contained within a finite bandwidth. And this is the topic that we are going to discuss in the uh, coming videos. We are going to see or we are going to calculate what is this finite bandwidth that contains the most of the energy or most of the power of the FM uh, or PM signals. So we'll stop here in this video and see you in the next video.